All right, so now we'll continue with this, um, this lecture on the sin of Baal Peor and really disclosing more of the fullness of the so-called um, Asherah pole. One thing I want to do right here, just so one can understand this Moabite um, connection a little bit better, let's look up Little Kim and, um, was it Nikki, Nikki Minaj? Let's look up little Kim and well you know this picture right here. This is so this picture here is so very interesting. All right, this picture here is so very interesting because this picture basically says it all. All right, let's just go over this once again. The sin of Baal Peor. Now it's when the Beit Israel, the Israelites stayed at the place called Shittim, and we need to go into the meaning of that the metaphysical bible dictionary so put a note and a reference if you don't get a chance to go through it here make sure you do this for your own studies especially for the deck the disciples go through this for yourself so the 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 men the beta israel men they went a whoring they went whoring with the moabite with moabite woman and they worshiped their god now what was the name of their god their god was called baal peor now what does baal or baal peor mean so we are going to use a particular reference while we keep this placeholder on the screen because it basically says it all but do you know what the scriptures what the what the word of Jah says about this? Now this is a very popular image. You all know what's going on here, right? Or you're familiar with it. Nobody's like, hey, I don't know what that's about. You know what that's about. You might be into it, you know. Um, and on a certain level, one can understand the temptation. You understand? But it's because we don't know the word. And, and the preachers and the pastors, the church, the modern black church has become um, like, uh, like Balaam, like Balaam was, in a sense, like Balaam, Balaam. They have fallen prey to the sin of Balaam and the doctrine of Balaam. It's one thing for us to be the once lost sheep and lost sheep over here and sheeple over here. It's another thing to praise the very system, you know, saying, that, has, that has worsened our humanity and our human condition to, to, to praise it. You know, saying, as many of those who have fall prey to the doctrine, the doctrine of Balaam, which Revelation warns us of, and that particular woman that is known as Jezebel. Jezebel is a particular kind of a church. It's, when it says Jezebel in Revelation, it's not talking about this woman or that woman, although some might have more or less of the Jezebel, as we say, the Jezebel, the Jezebel, Elzebel, Baal spirit. Now, Baal Peor, what does Baal Peor mean? And we're reading from the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary here, so pay attention to this, right? Baal Peor, Hebrew. It means Lord of the Chasm, the Chasm, C-H-A-S-M, the Chasm. It means a yawning place. <sighs> that kind of yawn? Well, let's see if it's that kind of yawn. It means Lord of the opening. Lord, the Lord will open up a way. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Well, this is the way that those who have fallen prey to the sin of Baal Peor, this is the way that's open to them. Do you get it? Do you, do you understand this? Now, let's go into some of the, the biblical references. The Baal, the Baal, the Baal, the Baal of Peor. Let's go back to the Balak, the wiki page on Balak right here, and just show you Baal. This is... Uh, an image of Baal, and we showed you in the in the video before where we broke down um, Baal in that the revelation sense of it, with the seven heads and all of that there, and 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 um, the heart, should we say, of Balaamism, you know what I'm saying, or the so-called ownership. Think of ownership, and when they keep repeating ownership society, because a Baal, a Lord, is an owner. Bale, one who owns something. The question is, who owns you? You get the stupid, ignorant folks talking about, I own myself. All right? Well, well if, if, if it were such. So the Baal of Peor 
or a form of Baal worship. It's a form. So let nobody think that all Baal worship is just this. This is a form. All right, this is a form of Baal worship, the Lord of the opening. So who would be the Lord of this opening? Would it, in normal case, it would be the pimp. The pimp is the Lord, and Lord, pimp, you know, that the, the connection there is so very interesting. Now we talk about prosperity pimps, pimps in the so-called pulpit or the bull pit, right? Interesting, Paul pit, right, a pit. Right? That should tell you something right there. The, but the Baal of Peor, or a form of Baal worship that was practiced in a place known as Peor, or Fior, Feor, Peor, in Numbers chapter 25, verses uh, 3 to verse 18. Sometimes in the Bible it's only called Peor, P-E-O-R, as in Joshua chapter 22, verse 17. B, Baal Peor was an idol. And what's so popular nowadays? Idol. American. What kind of idol? American idol. What kind of idol? American. So the heart of the heart of Balaam. Remember that connection with the heart of Balaam? I don't know if we have this, this image right here. I don't know where the heart of Balaam is going to show up right here. But let's see if we have the opportunity. And let's see if we see heart of Heart of Balaam or Balaam, the heart of Balaam. Let's see if the heart of Balaam shows up right here. The heart of Balaam. Um, da -da 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 -da. Let's see if any of the images shows up quick, fast. What comes under Balaam right here? Um, we have it on our other drive. What we showed you in the, in the previous video. Just check the, the videos in this 40th. Um, the RSS number 40 series, and you should find the video where you'll see that imagery right there um, on the 27 or uh, Revelation 27.org. Okay, let's just let's just interesting too that Balaam he rode what the donkey didn't he ride the donkey? Isn't the donkey the Democratic Party, the party of black folks, at least black folks majority wise? It's like in this video that we seen about um, G U not about G U not um, with game, and one of the one of the guys in that vid was talking about um, how when the cops come up on him, he'd be saying he's a Republican, so they don't treat him like a nigger. <laughs> it is interesting, right? They don't treat him like a jackass because he basically says he's a Republican. It's so very interesting. And now the donkey, right, the donkey was able to see the angel. You recall? The donkey was able to see the angel. But, but who didn't see the angel? The rider of the donkey, Balaam, Balaam, he was not able to see the angel until Yahweh, until Jah opened up his eyes. It's just like the pastors, the black pastors and preachers, they don't get it either. You know, they don't get they don't get this revelation of Rastafari. Although originally this revelation of Rastafari wasn't being preached by so called Nazi dreadlocks. Originally it was being preached by pastors. So that certain black preachers of the word who really whose eyes were open, they're the ones who revealed this, like Reverend Reverend James Morris Webb. All right, he was the first one to say, look to Africa where a black man will be crowned king. He shall be the redeemer. You know what I'm saying? In him you will find the redeemer. That was the original prophetic word. Later on we get the Jamaican, the Benjamite, um, Garvey, that adds a little flourish and spin to it. But, you know, what happened to John? You know what I'm saying? He's great among this generation, but least in the kingdom. So be it. Let's move forward. Now, it's Balaam. Right? This is an interesting image right here. Click on that. Let's see. Mm. It is Balaam was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. Interesting. Balaam was riding on, I'm going to save this one, maybe to use this one at another time. Balaam was riding on his donkey. You see, this is the donkey, the Democratic Party. 
Mm. It's so interesting because it's really the Republicans, you know, when the Republicans talk about the Republican Party was the one that freed the slaves and everything, and that's kind of really true. How, how did this thing get all mixed up? Don't you know? Do you vote? And you're saying, are you a shitty sin? I mean, a citizen? Okay, you should know these things because ignorance of the law is no excuse. But the churches tell the people, what do the churches say? You're free. You go into a black church and say you're free of the law. Yet everything in the society that controls us and incarcerates us and keeps us in this, in this um, 13th and 14th artificial person status is law. Is law, don't you understand the sin of Balaam, the doctrine of Balaam, and the connection of this particular portion right here? Now, um, going through these picks, we're just curious about what picks will show up. So um, let's look at these together right here. We, we have not looked at this first, this search right here. We just thought about that particular imagery. You understand? So. Okay, so Balaam was riding on his donkey, right? Balaam was riding on his donkey, right? Just like black people have been riding on the Democratic Party, right? Riding on the Democratic Party for the past, what, 40, at least 40 good years? At least 40 good years since the civil rights, since the march on Washington, since going down to Egypt instead of coming out of Babylon, all right, so let's uh, once again continue with this Lord of the opening, the Lord of the opening. You see the Lord of the opening. You know saying? Who is the pimp of the opening, the Lord of the opening, right? That's what Baal Peor is. Go look it up for yourself. Baal Peor is the Lord of the opening. Now, notice this, that Balaam, right, Balaam was hired by Balak, king of the Moabites, and just put a little footnote there with Brandy and Jennifer Hudson. You understand? Question, Moabites? Are there Moabites amongst us? The Moors will say, yes, they are Moabites. The Moors will say that we are Hebrews. You understand? But all Hebrews are not Israelites. Let's make that clear. The Edomites are also technically Hebrews, right? And the Moabites also technically are Hebrews, according to what, you know, what is taught. You know what I'm saying, of Christianity, but more properly, the true Hebrews, you know what I'm saying, are the Beta Israel. You know what I'm saying, the Beta Israel. So Hebrews are black people, but not all black people are Israelites. Let us understand that. A lot of folks think that we're saying that all niggers, all black people, all Negroes, blacks, and coloreds are Israelites. We're not saying that. You have to know who you are in order to know who your brother man or sister woman is. So Baal Peor was an idol, and there's a bunch of idol worship. In fact, these two are idols. Little Kim, Nicki Minaj, they are idols. You know what I'm saying? We, we say role models, right? And today they call it role models. What role are they playing? What role? It's a very, very ancient role, and they're playing this ancient role very, very good. Are not very good, but very effectively. Let's put it like that. Very, really affectively. Not effect. Well, it's effective, but more is has an adverse affect, right? An adverse affect. Now, Baal Peor was an idol of the Moabites and the Medeanites. The Medeanites, which are an Ethiopian people. When we say Medeanites today, right? Or when we say Medeanites in the biblical sense, it's like saying a Texan today. Is Texas part of America? Yes. But the Texans feel like they are almost a separate country to themselves in the same way that the Medeanites feel, and they were black people too, right? But these black people, along with um, the Moabites, they were worshipers of the Baal Peor, the Lord of the Opening, similar to how the black preachers and pastors preach and teach today, don't they? They talk about the Lord is going to make an opening for you. The Lord is going to make a way for you. It's not saying that the true God and Father, our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, doesn't make a way. But it says that them as so-called people of God who hold that Bible up, you understand, and, and say that they're there to bring the spirit and the truth of the word, it's interesting how they would avoid the flesh of Christ. You understand the racial humanity of Christ, his blackness of Christ. 
You know what I'm saying? And they would act, did tell the people that it does not matter. In other words, they have a spirituality only, but don't deal with the reality. Brothers and sisters, we got to deal with the reality because the situation that we're going through is real. Is real. You know what I'm saying? There's no escaping. There's no spiritual escapism out of it. We got to deal with this reality. And this is the word when you, when you properly study the word to show yourself approved to God as a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing, rightly dividing the word of truth. You understand? Rightly dividing this word. So it is said, right, it is said uh, Baal Peor is said to have been worshipped in obscene ceremonies. And, and this is interesting when you do biblical studies on these things. They'll talk about it was obscene or, or it was lewd. They use the word lewd. But they never even tell you really what was going on. Could what they did then, because people are ignorant of it, they don't know, they are doing now in ignorance, not knowing. That's exactly what is going on. Now, the metaphysical Bible dictionary expresses that Baal Peor, Baal Peor, right, is the exalting of sensuality. The exalting. See, there's nothing wrong with the sensuality that God has, has, has programmed, you know what I'm saying, as a basic of our nature, but when this is now exalted, it comes like a god or a, what? Goddess. These are goddesses here. These are modern goddesses here. The modern goddesses right here. And this is the very same thing that happened at the sin of Baal Peor, where the beta Israel men went a whoring, you know, it's like going to strip clubs, going to nightclubs, going to strip joints, right? Now, even more so, let's, let's, let's try to connect this, connect the fullness of this. Let, let us, um, okay, so that's, that's a little link right there. So we're back to the Asherah pole. Uh-huh. We're back to the Asherah pole. You know what I'm saying? From Asherah poles to church steeples. You know, the, the church steeple, where, where do you think that came from? But, but you'll go to a church with church steeple and say, oh, well, that's the tradition. Whose tradition is it? Is that the way God says, make my tabernacle with a steeple? He doesn't say that. So your tradition has made the word of God, as it says, of no effect. There are still in existence today remarkable specimens of original phallic symbols, penis symbols, penis worship, phallic worship. Steeples on churches is one of them. Obelisk is another form of it, like the Washington Obelisk. You know about that, how it has its crack in it. And they're about to spend what? About 8 or 18 or something like that billion dollars. You know, they don't have money for other programs, but, but for a symbol, they're going to spend uh, 8 to 18 or something billion dollars with a B, with a Babylonian B on it. Nobody has no problems with that. Why would they spend so much money on a symbol? Because it's a part of their worship. All this shows the influence, you understand, of ancient phallus worshiping generations. And the same thing that they did. So people think, oh, I don't deal with no mythology. I deal with reality, not no mythology. What you're living now into the people in the future, you know, into the overcomers in the future, will seem like a mythology too. Think about it. The way people are living right now when they sum it up. Because remember, it's the victors that write the history. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's those that overcome. And I and I are seeking to be the overcomers. So it's ones like I and I who will write that particular, that particular history like our ancestors in biblical times and in ancient times wrote those things and saved those to try to warn future generations. But it's kind of sadly obvious that they didn't get, that they didn't get the warning. So here's the chopping down of that. Right, and you can see these different images, like you can see the, the full Asherah right there, the maypole, you understand? You can see the maypole Baal. This is kind of very interesting Baal. Mm -hmm. Now, when we go to the Asherah pole page, let's go to the Asherah pole page. It says, don't be confused with Ashtaroth. Well, actually, they, they, they're, they're related. They're related there. Do they have any imagery here? It's a very simple page. Look at this page. Very, very simple. Not too much information is, is, is here. 
that image that we showed you before was Gideon. Gideon was cutting down the Asherah pole that was next to the altar, an altar to Baal. So there was an altar to Baal, and there was a pole. Right? It sounds like how they bring sometimes like the American flags. You know how they bring the American flags in some of the churches. You, you, you can see that right there. But Deuteronomy 16 and 21, it clearly states that Yahweh, yod Hey wow Hey, he hated the Asherim, you understand, whether rendered as poles, you understand, whether it's rendered as poles or do not set up any um, Asherah, don't set up no Asherah besides the altar, you build to the Lord your God, or as even trees, sometimes trees, you should not plant any tree as an Asherah besides the altar of the Lord your God, which you shall make. Now, some say that the Asherahs were not always living trees, as shown in 1 Kings 14 and 23. It says, they're Asherim besides every luxuriant tree. Now, the record indicates, however, that the, the Hebrew, Beta Israel, the ancient black Jews and, and, and Israelite people, the, the Ethiopian Prolum, you understand, they often, as Tacitus records, the Jews being of the race of the Ethiopians, they often departed from this idea. We have King Manasseh, for an example, a wicked boy. You understand? He is said to have placed an Asherah pole in the holy temple. Even in the holy temple did he place an Asherah pole, similar to what they do in the Catholic churches and, and the daughter churches, the other churches that come from that tradition, Second Kings 21 and 7. Now, King Josiah, he made reforms in the late 7th century B.C. And, and, and the reforms included the destruction of many of the Asherah poles, Second Kings chapter 23. Now, Exodus 34 and 13 clearly states, break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, and cut down their Asherah poles. You understand? Old Testament law right there. Very, very interesting. All right? Mm. So let's uh, back this up. All right, let's back this up. Now, you have another page, Asherah, here. Let's go to this other page, Asherah. Look, what, what we're going to find, oh, right, all this goddess talk. Yeah, so is this um, whole feminist uh, movement, like the vagina monologues, could have been an introduction to that. When you think about the vagina monologues, you know, that whole thing about the vagina, Lord of the Opening. You understand, Lord of the Opening right there. Now, this is all about a lot, a lot, the female Allah. You understand? Um, and as it was in ancient times right here, this is also a short page, too. Um, it, it's like they don't want to tell a lot about themselves, so there's not too much information right there. But John has guided and I, and I, and now we get to recognize that your modern strip poles, the stripper poles, which are being popularized all over the place, you understand, even among women's church groups as exercise. This is a good exercise for you. You stay in shape. Mm -hmm. Riding the phallus symbol. And it's interesting that, you know, this is so pop. They show it on TV. They don't blur it on TV. You know, they don't blur it. You know, they'll blur other things, you understand, but they won't blur this on TV, you understand. And this is a popular thing, Britney Spears. All of the black and white um, idols, you know, has deceived the whole world. The whole world has been deceived by this. But there is a particular direct effect on the lost sheep. You understand? There's a particular direct effect. We, we can look at this right here, and this can be considered to be like worship, worship postures, just like you see in some religions, uh, even in Islam, that shows different positions of prayer. This is like the different positions of prayer right here. Mm -hmm. So how does this figure in the sin and the doctrine of Balaam? The doctrine of Balaam, we can call it COINTELPRO. You know, that's also connected to it. So there's many different um, lines of evidence that we can follow up on this. There's many different lines of evidence that we can see that connects with this, even in the train. The, the train has that same pole, too. You understand? It's very popularized. Nobody's speaking about this. Not the preachers, not the pastors. You understand? Why? Because they have the mind of, the, of Moab. 
They have the carnal. They have not overcome the carnal mind. That's what Moab metaphysically relates to the carnal mind. And here, I think, well, this is the platform. This is, you know, I mean, getting into the detail. This is on the page. What this page is called right here? Um, this page right here is um, speaking about, like, all type of scientific, the scientific level, you know, metaphysical. They get metaphysical with this pole right here. But in simple and in, in very, in, in, in just simplicity, it is Baal worship. This is Baal Peor. And we're just showing you some of the images out there on Baal Peor. And we know, you know what I'm saying, within the so-called ghetto, we know the effect of this. This wasn't going on before, but this is going on now. Are things getting better now with all that we know, with all the technology? What about the morality? So now there's people who 40 years ago, you know what I'm saying, in a more biblical form of Christianity would never have dared, you know what I'm saying, to be promoting any of these things. You know what I'm saying? Now it's the very ones in the churches. It's the men, the men be going off, you know what I'm saying, to, to, to these clubs. And, and what do they offer to the dancers? They offer the God of this world. They offer the dollar, dollar bill, y'all. They offer that dollar bill. Isn't that what they do? They offer that dollar bill. And we all know what's on that dollar. We all know what kind of a talisman that dollar is. You understand? So you can see the whole connection. You know, you know, you can see, look at this, you know, that's Nick Cannon right there. You can see the whole connection. You can see what's going on here. You understand? It's demoralizing the people. This the demoralized. So that's what Balaam, that's what he advised. You understand? That's what he advised to um, Barak. Because Barak wanted him to curse the Beta Israel. He said, I cannot curse his people. Jah will not allow me to curse his people. So let's look through, let's look through this right here and, and see what we find. We first find Balaam, right? Balaam is riding democracy. Balaam is riding democracy or the donkey. Balaam, democracy, and donkey. That's, that's one particular revelation point about this particular part right here. And notice the democracy can see the angel of the Lord standing in the way, right? And it's hurting the rider. So those who are riding this democracy, you understand, the counterfeit um, antichrist preachers and pastors who have gone after Balaam, you understand, and Jezebel. Remember how Jezebel had all those uh, false, false prophets in the time of uh, uh, Elijah? Remember that portion of Elijah, right? And they said, the man whose eyes is open, it's like when I hear Dr. Martin Luther for King, you understand? He knew, he knew much more than he was saying. It seems like at the last he got a little bit, a little bit of guilt about what he was doing. You understand? But in spite of that guilt that he may or may not have had, you understand, he did what he did. And the Bible even talks about that in Jeremiah when it speaks about, you know, those who talk about dreams, false dreams, instead of his word. In other words, John says he don't like those pastors and preachers, those false shepherds who are encouraging the people in falseness and folly. You understand, telling their dreams instead of preaching their word, seeing how even King was, was bringing Gandhi and East Indianism and, and a whole other religion, you know, a whole other way of life that he probably, maybe he didn't fully understand it, but he was, in other words, Christ became Krishna, you understand, on a very subliminal, on a very subliminal a very subliminal level. So this is one of the links that we wanted to, you know, just show and show some visual of it. You know, when you can show the visual of this, you understand, and, you know, they said picture, a picture paints a thousand words. And all of this is a part, a part of this Asherah pole and the Asherah pole worship. The Asherah pole is the stripper pole. I mean, some of you probably already knew that. You know, saying some of you probably already understood that if you've been really seeking the truth, you've come across that. But some of you really didn't understand perhaps the deeper, the deeper implications of this. You know, saying what are the deeper implications of this? 
you understand the deeper implications of this are exactly what we're seeing going on even 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 in the ghetto today. You understand even in the black neighborhoods today. You understand the black on black crime. You understand? Let's look at a couple of pictures of the black church before we get out of here with this. Let's look up the black church. So, yes, the black church has a crushing and an awful, you understand, has a crushing and an awful responsibility. I, I, let me look at black church in Balaam. You understand? Probably only our vids will probably come up, come up right there. The black church, the black church in Balaam. Ain't that something? The black church and the donkey. The black church and the democratic, and the demo, demo, look, this is a weird one. Look at that that pastor behind the president right there. Wow, you know, um, yeah, the black church, the gospel. You understand the God spell, the God spell, the gospel. Uh, yeah, my people, here we go. You understand? So there's, there's so many different lines of of, of reasoning that we could you know, that we could follow up on this song. What we tried to do is just touch on a couple of them in, in, in basic, you know, simply each one of these particular points concerning this particular Torah portion and related Torah portions is, is really, really so very deep, you understand, as far as, you know, getting to the very roots of this and then seeing the variety of fruit off of it. So we'll probably conclude right around there. In this particular image, the 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 Balaam Balaam riding this donkey, the angel standing his way, the donkey sees it. You understand? But the rider on the donkey does not see it. Balaam was called to curse God's people. He could not curse God's people. But if the people were demoralized, you understand? If they were demoralized, as they have become increasingly demoralized. You understand? By this so called, um, it's not just hip hop. You understand? It's not just hip hop because we all know that hip hop, in, in its real original form, actually, actually was able to communicate a positive message. You understand? But something crept in. Something happened. You understand? To cause the people, you understand, to worship this false god and to be in this present valley of the dry bones, which is a, another very important connection that explains the popularity of the skull and bones imagery that we see so, so prevalent, you understand, especially among, you know, um, the lost sheep of the Beta Israel. So, brothers and sisters, um, thank you for, for, for watching, for viewing this, and I, I hope and pray the disciples and those who, who are part of this family of the King of Kings and His Christ are studying up more on this because it's, you know, to know the truth. It says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You understand? As we begin to learn and get to know the truth, you understand? It doesn't change, you know, the evil. It just exposes it and just makes us recognize the reality of the word of the King of Kings and His Christ. So, to my brothers and sisters, shalom, um, and I say salam to you all, shalom in the home, and shalom in the house of Ras Tefari.